Welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Lishni Jaste. Now the headlines. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra on Friday slammed the Uttar Pradesh government for ignoring the interests of the farmers, alleging that there is a severe shortage of fertilizers in the Bungal Khand region. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 104 crore 84 lakh mark. Out of the total vaccination, more than 72 crore vaccine doses have been given as the first dose, while over 22 crore doses have been administered as the second dose. Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of Nagaland, as Banyu Pom today inaugurated the pressure swing absorption oxygen generating plant at District Hospital Longland. The minister in his speech admitted the fact that the people of Longland District have not seen any good health sector until recently. With an aim to assess and observe the performance of the public sector undertaking, Committee on Public Undertaking conducted on the sport inspection today led by COPU Chairman Matang Yantang at Hotel Jafukoima, Hotel Saramati and Special Economic Zone, Ganesh Nagar Dimapur. Now for the news in details. With an aim to assess and observe the performance of the Public Sector Undertaking Committee on Public Undertaking conducted on the spot inspection today led by COPU Chairman Matang Yantang at Hotel Jaffa Koima, Hotel Saramati and Special Economic Zone Ganesh Nagar Dimapur. In today's inspection program, COPU members, Advisor R. King, Advisor Tovi, Tovi Hoto IME, MLA Arjito Jimomi, Advisor and Bongkau, Commissioner and Secretary NLA Dr. P.J. Anthony and officers from NLA were also present. COPU Chairman stated that committee will submit its finding report and recommendation to the Nagaland Legislative Assembly during the next sitting. To get more details on this, let's have a look at the report from our reporter, Adona. In the morning, we have, uh, we have uh, visited the uh, Hotel Chapu Hotel in Kohima. And here today, right now, we have visited uh, Hotel Saramadi. We have taken a tour of the hotel. The hotel staff have been kind enough to show us around. We are happy with uh, whatever, we are happy with the management. Although there are a lot of challenges, the hotel buildings are quite old, but uh, I must say that they are well maintained well. Of course, there are, you know, there are room for improvement. So um, we have taken, uh, we have uh, had a discussion, we have had interaction with the hotel staff, and we have also suggested measures for improvement. We have advised this, the hotel management to uh, improve upon the, the <coughs> functioning and also to see that there is profit. Profit is, uh, you know, accrued from the investments of the government. We examine and then we make recommendations accordingly. And that recommendation, those recommendations are placed before the assembly and uh, the stakeholders, the state governments, and also the management, they have to see that these recommendations are carried out. And uh, we also demand action taken report from the management. State public undertakings are not uh, performing to the expectation. Uh, we have uh, recommended that the units should do well, they should improve. Those units which are not operational should be made operational. And if they are not doing well, if they are still continuing to run at a loss, then they may be leased out with a reasonable profit sharing uh, formula. That was the main gist of the recommendation of the 101st report. I'm just wanting to see how big and how it is constructed now that So this is a standard shape, no? Yes, it's all the... 
Uh, we are now in the final touch point of our today's uh, special uh, study tour. Uh, the agro food processing special economic zone of Ganesh Nagar. We are here to uh, familiarize ourselves with the infrastructures that are put in place already and those which are yet to be established we have already taken note of. We have had uh, interaction with the, uh, the management and officials of industries department. Uh, we have been enlightened about the facilities uh, available here in the, um, this uh, special economic zone, especially focused on the export promotion uh, sc scheme. There are a lot of uh, facilities already created, but unfortunately the facilities are not made use of. So efforts have to be made in order to make the best use of the facilities that are already created. So this is our concern. Uh, we would urge the department and also the NIDC, who has been given the responsibility to look after this um, center. We urge upon them to expedite. We urge upon them to come up with uh, initiative and also come up with creative ideas in order to make the best use of these facilities available here and suggestions put forth by them. We also realize that we need to, we, we need a new strategy for bringing forward uh, investments here. And uh, as suggested, we will be working on that. And uh, <clears throat> secondly, um, if you would say that uh, the facilities or the advantages here is that you know, in an SEZ, SEZ it's, uh, it's totally 100% export oriented to production. And uh, the, fa the advantages that they have is that uh, for a number of years, even up to 10 years, uh, they can have a, a tax holiday, and uh, that is uh, related to GST exemptions. And uh, they can have uh, some uh, transport subsidies also for their uh, logistics. And uh, you know, we, uh, we, their, their exports are also facilitated and expedited also. We are trying to get the uh, customs also to open the land office here so that uh, the, the goods are inspected from here and given customs clearance from here. So when can we expect that, sir? Uh, we are working on it and uh, as soon as uh, we have viable, uh, viable investors here, the other, the other uh, components of the, the this SEZ will also fall into place. We, have, we, are, we are taking it up with the customs also. We are taking it up with, uh, we'll be taking up with other departments of the state government also. And thankfully, uh, uh, some of our honorable members are also having the portfolios for that. So we'll be taking up with them. They are all aware of the situation now. This is the ground report of today on the spot inspection by the Committee of Public Undertaking. I'm Adonah Hare with camera person Seville for Hornbill TV, Jumapo. The launching program of Crimson Club, a popular award-winning fashion brand, was held today at Kohima with KT Sukalu, advisor department of school education government of Nagaland as the chief guest. The newly inaugurated Crimson Club started its operations in Nagaland by inaugurating its first store in Kohima. Nirmal Kumar Jain, owner of the store, discussed brand recognition of Crimson Club in Nagaland.
especially with Mr. Nirmal's family. I have known the family for many years, and I have seen their enterprising skills. They never compromise on the quality of work they do, and I have seen them grow over the years. And I'm happy that they have opened another showroom here in Kohima. I'm informed, and I know that Kohima is one of the best districts, or rather the best headquarters where business is good. I do not mean that other districts are not doing well, but especially Kohima, the citizens, the public, they are so socially aware of the, you know, the growth of a township. So I'm happy that more investments are coming into Kohima town. And I congratulate Mr. Nirmal and his children, his two sons, who are never taking rest. And I used to advise them to sometimes go slow. But they are very hardworking people, and I'm happy that they have opened this Crimson Club. It's a, a branded company which can definitely cater to the, you know, the taste of our uh, local uh, uh, people. So I wish the score a great success and uh, pray that they'll do well. Thank you very much. Now we're here at the grand launching of Crimson Club and this Crimson Club is an exclusive clothes store for both men and women and this inauguration will be done by Katie Sukalu, advisor for Department of School Education and right now we have Pankaj, one of its franchise owner and we will, we will be getting more details about this uh, exclusive clothes store for him. So uh, sir, first of all, what is this um, you know, clothes store all about and what can we expect from this clothes store? This Crimson Club is an Indian based company. It has more than 98 exclusive stores in India and we are opening up this one. This one is our third Kinsan Club store in Northeast. And we are coming up with our fourth store in Guwahati. So that will make the tally to 99. Okay, so talking about the you know grand launching of Crimson Club, why do you think people should come and visit this store? Why do you think people should purchase from this, this store? The products here are very much affordable compared to the other brands and uh, the taste and the color collection of this brand is getting more response in the northern part of India as well as the northeast. So by this, what are you talking about? Like the color combination, like the blazers, these things are totally appreciated by the people of the northeast. So by see seeing the response in the other part like Assam and uh, Megala, so I think this product will be very helpful for the people of Nagaland also. So talking about, you know, um, you said that there are already uh, three, you know, stores here in Nordis. So what are the places, you know, the other three places? One in Dimapur, one in, in uh, this one is the third one, uh, Koima, and uh, third one in Duarte. Yeah. Okay, so you know like any future plans of extending it or taking it elsewhere in Nordis? Yeah, the company's future plan is to open up more than 25 stores in the North. Our main uh, opening up, the, the main motto is to give employment to the local youth. So all our 100% employees are from Kohima only. So as I've already stated, Katie Sikalu, advisor, Department of School Education, inaugurated the Crimson Club. Not, not only that, but he also stated that Kohima is one of the best commercial sites in Nagaland. And he also praised uh, the owner and his two sons for being uh, hardworking. The owner of this uh, Crimson uh, Club exclusive store for both men and women is Nirmal Kumarjin. I'm reporter Kekrisinu Kiwa with camera person Ketho Leno for Hornbill TV. Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of Nagaland, as Pang Yu Pom today, inaugurated a pressure swing absorption oxygen generating plan at District Hospital Longland. The minister in his speech admitted the fact that the people of Longland District have not seen any good health sector until recently. He stated the state government, even after attaining statehood, have neglected the health sector so many years and further asserted that the present government is trying its best to resolve this matter. The doctors and nurses of our state were helpless in executing their duties because of the improper infrastructure and other technical facilities, he said. Pang Yu also mentioned that the COVID-19 can be considered as a blessing in disguise because through it, the state is now able to tackle any other diseases. Speaking about the inaugurated PSA plant, the minister said that the PSA oxygen plant under the UNICEF has been taken up in six districts in Nagaland and 
Prior to this, the UNDP had also set up such plans in three other places in the state through some NGOs. The minister in his speech also thanked the principal director, principal secretary and senior officers of the department for the support in successfully setting up this PSE oxygen plant in Longland district. Pukyong Pom, public leader, M. Shami Ang, President Pom People's Council, and Robin, EDC Longland also spoke in the inaugural program. Medical facilities, Halki Bana, Olivia, even Amagan, the Kikana Dakbi Bana, Ole Amalaka, generation future, generation in the Medi Hotel, the Medi, Pediga Amagan Aji. Edo oxygen the generation blando and no great corona rakidias. State Amahan Pagana Joa Kalida Health Sector the Asian neglect Korea. But by this government under the leadership of Chief Minister and the Department of Health and Family Welfare led by me, Koeto Ado blessing in this guy, Ekisamdido. Eshi Pal Oigana Aji Koil Laga Pimar Laga Prevention Misery Noigana. Any kinds of epidemic. Keep Bima Olive So Palo Volaki Oigana Common Bra Present Common Bra Idiga Chol Bra Takatigana Ali Longindi Noi So Nagalindi Any District Hospital CHC Remy Health Center, Soap Center, leveled up, PC stranded Korean. Amagan Aji, Oxygen Generation, Plan, Orado, Nagalindi, Choida, I said. we have taken up six districts. Ido Soap District Headquarters. Aro Ido Agodi, UNDB Goyana, NGOs, Cobret, Ektabra, through the government of India. Vision, we do tenda jagadi. Ya do, chip minisa amar do in jagana and operate also. The Naga Students Federation held its 75th Foundation Day at Hotel Jaffa Kohima. Former NSF executives, along with the present executives and cell executives, were present in the meeting. Achumbe Mokikon, former NSF president, gave a highlight on the genesis of NSF. Keguahan. Step NSF president while speaking to Hornbill TV spoke on the ongoing works and focus of NSF. <laughs> the real discourse on the Naga political issue started only after creation of this table, which means this has just been a small thing. This has in no way satisfied. This is in the creation of the Nagaland state put has in no way addressed the issue raised by the Nagas. So therefore, the real political discourse started from 1964 onwards. In today's program, two former presidents spoke about the achievements of NSF and they were going very strong. So do you think the current NSF is going strong? And you know, like, would you mention to us some of the major achievements of the NSF right now? In fact, uh, Naga Students Federation, since its inception till today, we have been uh, striving hard. We have been doing justice. We have been delivered lots of things. And in fact, uh, even this dinner, we took an oath to serve the people. We are not here for personal interest, but we are here to serve and we are here for the people. We also heard about students and, you know, leaders sacrificing their lives like for Nagaland and the future of Nagaland. Do you think the NSF right now has also achieved something big or working towards something big? Actually, uh, what I want to tell my Naga youths and students is that many times, many students as well as uh, Naga intellectual youth used to uh, misread the Naga Students Federation, the activities of the Naga Students Federation. But I want to remind all the Naga youths and students that Naga Students Federation was formed uh, for Naga self-determination and to achieve Naga rights. And for which in the process of our journey, in fact, as a student body, 
we tried to deliver lots of issues confronting the state of Nagaland. However, the main objective of the Naga Students Federation is not uh, within the PT issues of the state of Nagaland, but it uh, connects the entire uh, artificial boundaries of the Nagas, and uh, we represent the Naga youths and aspirations uh, across the globe. And uh, our principles is very loud and clear. We stand for unification of the Nagas. I cannot specifically mention uh, that a particular achievements has been met. Or maybe your, you know, like very current or very current executives just uh, before you. Uh, in fact, uh, when we consider the state of Nagaland, in fact, Naga Students Federation, we have been uh, pursuing uh, the matter to uh, within the state of Nagaland to implement Nagaland State Staff Selection Board, as well as uh, there are lots of issues which is confronting us. Uh, but however, as I have said earlier, the major issues of the Naga Students Federation is to assert the uh, position of the Nagas, which is why uh, we can never deviate and we will continue to uphold the legacy and aspiration of the Nagas. I am reporter Kia Christine Kia Huang with camera person Kia Toleno for Hornbill TV. That's all we have for now. Stay tuned for more news with Hornbill TV.